okay, so red then goes into spiral dynamics blue or amber in altitudes. And um, we have an ego now. Uh, what happens there is we're sort of at the end of the Old Testament and we're getting into the New Testament. And people are um, recording, Amber uh, records these oral traditions into very well-written, um, highly modified and censored uh, uh, faith doctrines, canons, you know, um, the New Testament and the codification of the Old Testament as one example. Uh, when Amber Meme comes into play, it fucks it all up because the the script is a script for all of society like you need instead of a power human you get a power document or a power concept that governs a much larger spread of people because basically you get to a certain point where people are too far away from that um power power god figure that it's it's not as real to them so in the axial period of history there's this kind of reordering that takes place into as opposed to a pantheon of power gods, you see this kind of rethinking to a monotheistic sort of religion. And people start reporting publicly on causal state experiences, which is a direct experience of oneness with God, in this case, the biblical um, Yahweh uh, creator of the universe, according to the red to amber comprehension of it. So that thing takes the place of the patriarchs. So we're not worshiping like Moses and Noah anymore, but we're worshiping what they worshiped, which is God itself, the creative spirit of the universe. Or in the East, it becomes uh, more of a, a, a systemifying of getting to that causal experience, the direct firsthand experience in the upper left of Godhead um, through the self, through the upper left. So the amber meme expression of Buddhism is a systemic mythological way of practicing to get people to the causal state. In the West, they did a different thing where it's more of a prescription for running society in total. And it doesn't really give you instructions to commune with God. It more says, here's, there, here's a guy who did the communion with God thing better than anyone else. Jesus. You don't have to be Jesus. Just do everything that Jesus instructed us to do. And that will be our canon and our code. And anyone who doesn't follow it, just imagine the very worst thing you can possibly imagine forever. That's what's going to happen to that person. So it's an absolutistic, mythic membership absolutism is the ordering principle of um, Amber or Blue Meme. And this is where you start to see like a very rigid systemizing of things. This is basically medieval times. This is kind of historical emergence of religion as opposed to like folk religion, but the system, systematic religions that, that themselves are now trying to take over the world under, you know, like you have smaller kingdoms at Red Meme operating underneath the umbrella of the church, you know, the uh, the the uh, Roman uh, Empire became the Catholic Church to a certain extent, you know, uh, is over the period of time, you know, a couple hundred years after the the story of the New Testament took place, it became a thing that ordered Western culture according to rigid rules and doctrines, and so in the West, that's that was the expression of Amber Meme, and it's hard for us even to imagine. Uh, a world where like everyone around you is a devoutly religious person. And it's like, you're either, you're either good or bad in that world, according to the religion. Like there were people who were bad Christian. Based on this, uh, following this system. Yeah. If you don't follow that system, you're obviously evil. If you do follow that system, you're obviously good. So they're all uh, devout Christians, sort of but a, some of them are good at it and some of them are bad at it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this is monarch. Uh, so let's say, let's say in the red red realm, if you add, if I'm the ruler and you Adam are physically bigger and stronger than me, you be, can become the ruler by defeating me. Yes. Where in red blue, 
I'm the ruler, you're bigger, stronger, you defeat me, that doesn't make you the ruler. Now there's a lineage, like you killed me, great, now my kid's ruling. Yeah, we would we would go to the doctrine and be yep. to things. It's like who is the Instead the power of, god according to these rules, yeah. yeah. And it's very um uh obviously as you get to a new meme, the new meme tends to suppress the lower meme. So there's there there's this um uh what do they call it? This is like prime dir this is like when I was trying to think of the prime directive. Um idolatry, right? They're saying don't don't hang up a pole in the winter and that would later become Christmas trees. Um, don't worship your local power god. Um, only worship the one true god, the canon, uh, the canonical, you know, records. And the, it's a very strong deprioritization, uh, deprioritization of that red meme. But see, this is the funny thing that as red meme turns into amber, they're very together and implicit. So you have that king, that power god, but that king is a servant of the church more and more <laughs> but they're still there and it's funny because the church is trying to suppress that there's like no no don't don't give glory to the king it, it, it's not it, man it, yeah in purple it goes from uh you know there there is a deity of something uh and then in red beam it's like okay but that deity was actually a person and then you have all of this like oh not equality but sort of a equal sense there's a playing field and then in blue, well, we're losing control because our our vill our tribe it became a village, then became a city, then became an empire. I'm losing control of the empire because it's so vast. We're reintroducing a deity as a singular so that I can tell you that you're wrong if you go against this this deity. Whereas in purple, if you're wrong, you get hurt. Something you're missing something. Where it, in blue, if you're wrong, it's just whatever a certain group or single person, the church, the monarchy, um, the empire said was this is the way to do it. You did it a different way. So you're just completely wrong. It's yep. kind of interesting <laughs> that it went from deity to man back to deity, but in a sense of controlling, in, in a controlling sense. Yeah. And that absolutism, it will, it, it chooses, it just chooses. Like in types, you have to be right-handed, not left-handed. You have to be straight, not gay. If you're a white person, if you're coming from a white culture, you have to be white, not, not black. If you're in a patriarchy, you have to be male, not female. So they, there's very absolutistic and they, 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 it's very superlative. It's like, you have to be this, this is the thing to be. So that's your, um, that's how Amber. Kind of, kind of came to me just now. So stop me if I'm wrong, because this is just a thought experiment. We said the kid is starting to say no on that mm -hmm. individualized spiral. The kid starts to say no, but they do still make up a fantastical story about the tree. I think you can start to see a little bit of blue in there when they play one parent against the other. <laughs> They're now taking control. Well, mom said, or dad said it was okay. Mom said it was okay. I, 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 this is just coming to me now, so maybe it's completely yeah. wrong, but I think that is a little bit of blurring the line into the next meme in using people, yes. using a society, using an empire to get your goal done. And children would do that by... Operating uh, through the know. system, in the system. Like red is Mad Max in the system. It's like, the system is granted, what do I think about it? What's my reaction to it? Amber will see the parents and be like, okay, I kind of get what they're doing. Now, how do I... Particip How do I give them what they want? I just want to give them, I want to participate and give them what they want. I want mom and dad to be happy. They'll give me stuff. It's very cooperative. The problem is when mom and dad are like, oh, don't, don't hang out with those kids. You know, when, when mom and dad have these kind of corrupt motives because you're blindly obeying them, right? You've learned how oh, to do that. You. You've learned how yeah. to do that. Yeah. Red doesn't even know how to do that. Uh, start to manipulate other people to do what you want without violence and it's clear in the and we're talking about upper left for a moment but it's clear in the child formation that they get that ability to play the role of other to understand where other people are coming from and motivated by when you're when you're dealing with strictly red meme they literally cannot comprehend what other people think or feel a child uh, at red meme enters a room happy and cannot see that the parents are not happy they assume I'm happy, the world is happy, the universe is happy, everything's happy. <laughs> so it's very startling them when the parents are like, be quiet, ah, I gotta get my work done. Oh, I thought reality was happy, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but
But Amber starts to see that it's like I'm a part of a group. And my, my coherence with that group is actually a big part of what will make me work functionally. It becomes pa pathological because we don't yet actually understand uh, who we are or what we're doing. We don't really understand nature. Uh, we've only tried, we've tried to define good and bad in a basic sense. Like the story of Jesus is an example of how to be good. And it's based around taking on the responsibility of the world for other people sacrificing yourself to take on this the response so that's the model of the most moral behavior possible is to suffer so that other people may be may find their way um common common in the axial religions but uh, there's always an element of sacrificing the self for sure um and we, we see as orange comes out that that becomes the primary antagonist <laughs> as they do so at each stage the former stage is an antagonist, but is also integrated. So you see them partnering up. You also see them in conflict with one another. Um, in today's world, you have the whole first tier partnered together, but also in conflict with one another. So the, the really incredible thing that happens to get out of Amber into Orange, how did, how did this all occur? Education tends to be religious in nature. People who are educated in an Amber Meme system are learning religion. They're learning Hebrew scrolls, let's say, in the West. And that makes them intrinsically good at writing and, and language. And so these people who are in these religious institutions learning start to develop a kind of um, secular comprehension because we find that there are rules in nature that aren't covered in the biblical scrolls. We find that... Um, there's, uh, in physical reality, things occur in the same way over and over again. And the Bible as, as doesn't really explain that properly, but uh, various things explain it better. So this is where science starts occurring. You know, you start actually seeing in the world that if a person empowers themselves to take responsibility for reason in the, in the, in the world, to, to say, maybe we can understand the world and operate on it directly. That's a really arrogant thing to say at Amber Meme and kill that person. No, God is the glory. Like humans are meek and, and, and sinful. It's a very bad thing to say at Amber Meme, but people start noticing like, wait a minute, we can actually predict the weather. Like we can actually win wars by understanding the rules of reality. So this is where um, science starts taking hold and Another thing that that transitions us from amber to orange is the stranglehold that religion has over society makes it impossible to express yourself artistically because the only art that you're allowed to make is art that brings glory to God. So you can only do religious works in music, in theater, in literature, only religion. And the church is, entirely censors what you're allowed to do. In terms of public debate, you can only say pro program pro-church things if you don't you will be attacked and isolated so it, um the quadrants are all completely dominated by this lower left religious fervor that it, it completely um oppresses all the other quadrants and orange meme begins to see this and starts opening up and particularly the upper left or i mean uh, the upper right to science um and that gets separated from the, the lower left and lower right of religion. And so there's a conflict forming here. There's sort of a schism that results in um, a switch from religion-based mythic membership conformist amber meme feudal kingdoms uh, to these small groups of rational, logical, scientific, achiever people who are simply on this world, they feel like they're empowered to actually understand and operate upon this world. And they say, well, we don't want this king anymore. We're good. We're going to govern ourselves. And everyone laughs. But then they're like, no, no, we're going to shoot you if you try to govern us. We wrote this thing about how, how we're going to govern ourselves. And we're just going to govern ourselves. There's no king. It's just us. So that's orange meme. And this is the revolution, you know, of every um, this is the move from uh, feudal, feudal um, 
systems to capitalist systems to um, representative democracies and nations or, or um, organized around the idea that we're all responsible um, for the knowledge quest and it's not closed it's not a written book it's a book that somebody writes a chapter and then someone comes in and says no this part's wrong this part's wrong so it should be like this and so it's open source and this is how integral is too because it's past that so all this stuff can be modified because it's post amber meme absolutism we're now uh any scientific any scientific theory or paper can be discredited disproven by a better scientific paper or theory not the case with canonical religious texts they have to be correct we'll write more texts to make them more correct <laughs> mind blowing <laughs> Okay, um, so what green, so orange um, has hidden biases. This is what, um, orange doesn't realize this, but it's based on an amber meme foundation, and it always has been. So you have this American Revolution, let's say, where a constitutional democracy is created, and it gives people the ability to pursue artistic expression of any sort, um, freedom of speech to express any political lower, lower left, lower right opinion, um, no censorship uh, by the church um, to whatever extent possible, but they don't even realize they're excluding blacks, they're excluding women, they're excluding, um, they're imprisoning people with different mindsets, right? So it's not, it's not culturally sensitive. It's rational. Um, it's rational coming from amber meme, blue meme. Um, so there's it, those haven't really been picked it's still apart. Control. To it. So it's, yeah, it's rational, but it hasn't really learned cultural introspection yet. It's not looking at colonialism. No to this rationalization. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, you have, uh, let's say this African continent, which we can go in and exploit and take all their shit. So we should, because we're the orange meme rational people that are bringing freedom and uh intelligence basically <laughs> to the world so yeah g grab their shit get them involved with this they'll f they'll find their way it'll trickle down that was kind of the orange meme mindset it's really fucked up <laughs> but yeah. it's but you look at the dignities the change from amber to orange it's like well we went from believing in a bunch of nonsense that somebody told me to actually i have the power to understand reality that's really cool and orange meme is one of my favorites it's one of the ones that really I love Ayn Rand. I love it tugs at my heartstrings because there's so much justice in a courtroom compared to a mob lynching. <laughs> um, and I feel this directly in my life every day. Like orange is so cool. Orange is my hero. I love orange. But it's not entirely self-aware. It's, it's, it's not entirely making the world a better place. It's making itself bigger and more successful and powerful and productive, but it doesn't really care about the big picture and about the experience of every individual person existing in that society. For Orange, it's good enough that anybody can get by, that you have an opportunity for, for life, liberty, and happiness. That's a hell of an achievement. So or, yeah, for Orange, that's sufficient. But as we get more cozy and we, <laughs> Um, we live together longer, especially because of this integration that occurs at Orange Meme. You start letting other people, other colored people, other believing people into your society. Uh, we tolerate all religious expression. Now you have this like melting pot thing going on and you have Jim Crow laws. You have um, internment of the Japanese. So this is Orange Meme still. It's orange. It's first tier. So this is why Green Meme is needed. Because it's really easy to see the dignities of orange in our world, but it's hard to see that there's still a great deal. This was something that that's pretty active in the discussion right now of stage theories in general, is the extent to which um, altitudes or, or spiral dynamics is echoing these unconscious biases of orange meme rationalist thought. Um, very important question, right? Uh, but we, <laughs> I'm not on planet hate capitalism capitalism is so cool 
I have street lights that keep the, the road lit for me. I have heat that keeps my body warm. I love it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but yeah, capitalism can result in feeling exploited, feeling like um, you're competing and there's so many people to compete against that you'll never win. Um, this is stuff that James and I talk about a lot in just the lifestyle kind of conversations. Um, these, these feelings of emptiness and alienation is that thing that you're feeling in planet COVID right now is Karl Marx's alienation. That's what is happening <laughs> is you have these jokers that run everything. Why are they there? And, uh, who am I in all this? I have no role. Who am I? I'm nobody. What? Why? I want to be somebody. Let's go. So this is kind of kicking down the door to green. Um, wait a minute. I'm free on this planet. And um, this whole Orange Bean program is working. But what could we really do? What could we really feed everyone now? Like, seriously, could we really like make the planet uh, sustainable? Maybe. Um, Orange Meme proceeds basically to the nuclear bomb. That's kind of where Orange Meme gets and Green Meme is required. <laughs> so my definitions were are correct. I was just calling it the wrong thing. Yeah, you're good. And it makes sense because this is the thing. Second tier shits on Green. It doesn't understand how advanced Green is. Green is really advanced. Uh, <laughs> it's the top 20%, 25% of people in terms of their ability to comprehend the reality that we're in. Really, really good. So I'm not, a, I don't shit on orange. I do shit on amber and red because I have pathology at amber and red. Um, and because of these pre-trans fallacies, but you'll always see me being a cheerleader for orange and green. They're both really cool, big fan. <laughs> um, because I'm a green meme douchebag, as a boomer. Uh, Okay, so what happens to orange is um, reflexive self-awareness, um, a sense of tedium, the novelty of orange wears off, and your uh, factory floor worker, 10 hours of, your, of every day, um, and it's like, well, what is this all about, really? Are we just going to get richer and richer, or some people are going to get richer and richer? Who, who, yeah, again, I think <laughs> green memes are just like, who am I? Why am I here? Um, existentialism. Um, so we get that orange meme makes sense. There's no denying that, but we deconstruct orange meme. We start to say, well, this system started when people were riding on horses with wooden teeth and had black slaves. Did we really fix all that? Or did we build a little birdhouse that works and we actually didn't, we, uh, a big part of who we are is still wanting to have black slaves. <laughs> I think I'm seeing that in the world that I live in, right? Because all, all those first year stages still exist. They're still here. In large numbers and large percentage of, uh, percentages of who we are and what, our, what we say to one another, all the first tier stages are, are showing up so um green meme is not aware of these stages and that's the problem with green meme but it's starting to say like well clearly there's systems happening here there's self systems cultural systems and social systems and so green memes job is to deconstruct those literally you know like taking a part of vcr to deconstruct the media and culture and the self to see how it works but when you deconstruct your birdhouse, it fucks up your birdhouse. And it's like, okay, well, you understand things better, but like, did, you didn't build anything. You didn't make a better birdhouse. You just took apart someone's birdhouse and said that it's crap. <laughs> um, so with green, we want certainly equality of opportunity. Starts at orange and becomes fundamental at green. Um, Right now, green is very... In universal empathy starts to come in. Yes. You may not be able to do anything about it. Yes. You can feel that there's a, a, a negativity and injustice and inequality. I just don't know how to fix it. 
but I can see it. And that becomes your personal responsibility. But yes, you are you don't know what to do. And so it starts with kind of just exploring it and unpacking it. And that's what Unthink Me does. We are deconstruction. We're doing green meme work. We're doing other work too. But there's a lot of deconstruction going on here because we're we have healthy we're trying to have a healthy spiral. We're being rational, we're deconstructing. You'll see some magic. You'll see some red meme out of us. So we're trying to be healthy on the spiral here. Um, no. <laughs> I'm gonna do magic. I have magical plans. Purple. Okay. Green meme. Green meme, um, the technological base is essentially that you remember remember talking on the phone? Yeah. Writing letters. So we're all connected to one another in an unavoidable way. I have to know if I want to know what's going on, I go on my social media and I find out what everyone in my manufactured reality thinks and feels and believes. I'm exposed to so many more perspectives than I was in Orange Meme and they're just, I'm inundated with them. I'm, I'm, um, we live in a world where people's psyches are very much packed together more, you know, it, it's not that we're, we're more, we're communing more, it's just that we're connected more. And so, um, for example, you know, in these days, one of the biggest things that happens in the media is if the police kill a black person, and that happens ever, it'll be the biggest news story. Um, and that's showing how green meme is dominant in the media, it's trying to point out social injustices. Is that the biggest story? It becomes like a murder. Like there's lots of murders, but this is important to green meme. So it becomes the biggest news story ever. Or that the author of Harry Potter said something transphobic. Is that big news? It is if you're green meme. It, Orange meme doesn't care what Elon Musk thinks politically. It's not relevant, right? Or uh, JK Rowling. Um, so this, this whole refereeing of culture the social media like refereeing um, and, and in the mainstream media as well is the green meme expression. It's, it's um, culture is self-aware and it's operating upon itself. So, so green meme's really cool, but it, it's not seeing the whole spiral and it's not understanding that we're all coming from different places. The, the main problem with green is that it, it overstates the dignity of a person to where it will think that every person is equally competent to show up at this particular party, whatever that party might be. So in the education system, it's like, just let everyone in. Well, but some people worked a lot harder to get there and some people are a lot more prepared to get there. And the, this let everyone in mentality is making academic institutions pretty gross right now. Like, I don't know if I'd go to college if I were just getting out of high school right now. <laughs> I, I probably would just, because I would be that person in that context. But to me as like the 40 year old guy, like the, the whole academic like experience has changed. Um, even going into like grade school to where these green mean values are like, like brought in. Like if you don't, if you didn't grow up in the nineties, you might not realize like in, in our school system, we didn't talk about gender um, identity. We had a sexuality unit that taught you how to not get STDs and basically just to be responsible. But there, there was not a unit sense. in our class. Was, all right, everybody grab a condom on your way out. Yeah. <laughs> STDs, that, that's, babies. Uh, from the movie, I think, Mean Girls. That, yeah, nailed <laughs> it. That was the whole class. Yep. And then they demonstrate sex in front of the class. But there, was no, there wasn't this whole, like, you know, explore your gender. Are you, you know, another gender? Like, that was taboo when I went to school. Certainly. Um, I don't it being taboo i just remember it not existing like it wasn't uh that someone brought it up and it was shut down and it, this is my very own mm -hmm. one person in the universe experience it was never even brought up to be shot down. well i i was transgender secretly and whenever i came out about that in any point before my 20s it was it was very suppressed and uh, a person well, in that situation when I found out about you and your dirty little secrets, uh, I 
just well, like, there you go, right? Life. There you go. It's a dirty little secret in that context. Not a so, really uh, admirable, applaudable thing. Your, your marijuana pipe, and I knew which drawer in your dresser you kept it in. <laughs> so I went in there, and there's a bunch of ladies' panties in there. And I was like, hey, Adam, what's with all these lady panties? And you're like, you don't wear ladies' panties? I was like, nope. You're like, oh, well, I do. I was like, oh, okay. So where's the pipe, though? <laughs> Weird, I do remember. I, I didn't remember that, but I do know. I did not care. Well, yeah, you're not, you're not like you a... register as yeah. something. Yeah, you're just like, of course Adam would have some bullshit like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's uh, like when people come out around me or they tell me that they uh, have had uh, gender reassignment surgery. Are you somewhere where you can write this down? I don't care. Right. Uh, I, I, the only time I start to care, uh, and my wife, <laughs> not the naked cat, this one, uh, and I have talked about it. The only time that that becomes an issue is if that's your entire personality. Uh -huh. If that's all you are, that's that's when it starts to matter. But if you're a whole person um, that chose to do something, whatever that may be, I don't care. That's where we're, see, you're expressing like an orange kind of attitude about it. And that's where green meme can become really pathological is like in terms of reacting to uh, transgender in the 90s you could um, express like disapproval or, or um, uh, discomfort or something you could also express like just general acceptance like man I don't care and you could also express like curiosity and support um, I think are kind of is kind of the entire range and it's really unclear like how you're supposed to handle that so yeah my, my experience in the 90s was more that it was kind of like a creepy, like secrety thing, and that that was okay, just um, to the same extent that like doing drugs or something, you know. But it it, it was seen as taboo, and and certainly, um, if I did it at school, it would have been um, noticed, which is like some people would have supported it. A lot of people would have reacted very negatively against it. And in general, people wouldn't care. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and again, just the, the language part of it. I don't care is in that, but not that I'm writing it off or, or putting it in a box and then putting that box at the bottom of the ocean. It's that it doesn't affect my feelings or thoughts towards you. If someone approached me and needed a support uh, in that realm, of course you're going to get it, but it's not going to change how I, like before I knew and after I knew, I'm going to treat you the exact same way because it doesn't, I don't care in that way. It's, yeah. it's like, that's that's just you. And okay, that's and, fine. Um, Did you want me to be upset about it? Did you want me to be like overly protective about it? Like that's because that's not me. <clears throat> I'm going to treat you the same. Me as an expression of altitudes and a personality across four quadrants at a particular point in time. Um, when we yeah, experienced, not Adam Lowen as like a person. we had One. multiple friends who were closeted homosexuals all through their youth and high school. These people we hung out with, and it was a secret. And like we would have been supportive of that, but we just didn't. A lot we we found out at a no. particular time, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, like just that these people were closeted um, and and that um, that was just gay. So gay happened sooner. Like gay went through a process of being accepted kind of in the 90s. Like I recall the media campaigns um, of trying to normalize, like what do you do if you know someone who has HIV? What do you do if you know someone who's gay? Like these were things that were rapidly changing throughout the 90s. And now we're doing that with really more... Um, difficult stuff it's uh, particularly transgender and kind of that's kind of coming to the end i think i think that was a couple years ago um and i think it's gone too far personally i don't think it needs to go as far as it has like as a transgender person i feel good enough <laughs> like i feel like you can i don't feel persecuted unless i'm in a place that's clearly going to persecute me for that which i am and i do so I've gotten through that process of being okay with myself, and now I'm okay with the idea that I live in an amber-orange society that's going to punish me in small ways for for expressing myself in my in an authentic way. 
that's something that I'm totally okay with at this point because it makes sense to me because it's a healthy spiral. <laughs> um, where I can be transgender, I will. Where, I, where, where it's not constructive, where it's not useful, where it's not helping anything, I, I don't need to indulge that. It's not necessary. I think that's where it becomes path pathological is where you need everybody to approve and celebrate and accept you. And no, you're just some asshole like you've always been, but now you have different diddle bits. It's not special. This is what scares me about today is they're making it into like a hero thing, like you're special. So everyone wants to be transgender. It's the opposite of the world I lived in. If you were transgender, you're like, oh, fuck, like, I got to like keep this on the DL. <laughs> Um, and I think it's gonna, it should be just, in the, it should just be like unremarkable, like you're saying, just like, okay, like yeah, not noticing, kind of don't what care. I'm getting at. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to make like bold, wide brush stroke comments on here and then be canceled. Um, the, the person whose personality is rooted in that they are trans or any part of the LGBTQIA plus community, if that is what drives your personality is where you fall on that spectrum. I don't have time for you. <laughs> There's so much cooler things. Yes. <laughs> right. If, if, if you're a gender, if the main thing you represent is a, hi, I'm a Barbie, I'm pink, I'm a girl. That's boring. Like that's, that's a very like low expression of a spiral. And right. even if that's a transgender thing, that's a little more interesting, but it's like, I, you're not a gender. We're, we're second tier. We're not a gender. Are you kidding me? So, to me, again, we're talking about green memes, so this is on topic, but it might not be clear to people. Trans... Well, a bit down a very sensitive rabbit hole here, but this is part of the... Sensitive uh, to empathy. audiences today, yes, yes. Viral. Yeah. yeah. We're not sensitive about this. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so write this down. I don't give a shit. But um, I, I do want to like do... Are because just be you. I want to talk quite a bit about that, but we're just kind of introducing this concept in Green Meme as an example. Um, to me, what's happening is more intergender. What I consider transgender is that I'm not identified as a gender. You know, half of people like pink Barbies. What's that all about? Am I going to pretend that I have no interest in that? Why would I not have any interest in that? Those other people are human beings. They're so slightly different from me. You know, the difference between one man and another might be just as big as the difference between me and an average man and an average woman, whatever. Um, I found just exploring my own self and my own psyche, and it, 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 there's a lot of that goes into it, but I just, I have much more an affinity with those traditionally feminine values and interests. And it's not that remarkable to me. It's not that important to me. It's just a thing I've noticed. And it's like, okay, well... Actually, I, I do want to be a girl. I want to be cute and I want to um, be like pink. And um, I just like the feminine thing. And I feel like it, it fits what I think I am pretty well, as does the male thing. But I certainly don't identify with either. Um, so that's what I would consider transgender. It's not about giving giving me a different pronoun. It's, it's about no pronouns. Because why do we conjugate language with gender? That's such a silly thing to conjugate. Like reality is male and female. <laughs> well, that's Taoism, yeah. right? yin and yang, but I don't want to put that conjugation. In. I especially don't want to add new pronouns. I want to take away pronouns. I want to be a faceless man and just refer to myself in the third person at all times. Cause that's kind of my self sense is, is I am a third person. Like I'm, I don't know this guy. I don't know what's really making this guy tick. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't trust this guy. Maybe part of the anti, <laughs> nihilism thing as well yeah I, I don't i don't worry i don't matter what's important is, is you guys